what we're going to do here, this is a story about a love triangle. One corner of the love triangle is anchored by the person who's buried here at this grave, Robert A. Erian. Turns out he was a doctor, born in Tennessee in 1804, uh, studied at Transylvania University, became a physician, and then um, moved to Nacogdoches uh, in the 1830s, early 1830s, and set up shop. Okay, so we have Robert Erian. Uh, another piece of this love triangle is a very famous general in the Texas Revolution. Any guesses who it might be? Sam Houston. Sam Houston. Okay, do you already know the love triangle story? I've, I've, I've heard <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping I'll introduce a few new wrinkles to the I'd like to hear it again. Though. So here is Sam Houston, right? He was the first president of the Republic of Texas, the general that led the troops finally to victory at the Battle of San Jacinto. He is the only person in the U.S. who's been elected governor of two states, Tennessee and Texas. He served as a senator once Texas was admitted to the Union. If you think about Sam Houston, he has a major city, a national forest, a museum, a uh, historical park, um, I'm going to forget some of the things, uh, a number of things named after him, and he has the largest freestanding statue of a figure, himself, in the whole U.S. So a man of legendary proportions, indeed. He had someone in Nacogdoches whose heart he was hoping to woo. Her name was Anna Regay. When her family moved to um, Nacogdoches, Texas in the 1833, uh, by way where she was born in Pennsylvania, they settled down in Cincinnati for a while, then they came here. Uh, her father set up a very successful commercial business system in downtown Nacogdoches and the oldest of eight of their children, Anna Regay, was 14 years old when they moved here to Nacogdoches. Sam Houston, when he first laid eyes on Anna Regay, was 26 years her senior. So I know things were done a lot differently back then, but uh, Sam Houston, upon meeting her and being totally captivated by her beauty, her intelligence, she happened to be educated in the finest schools in Philadelphia. She spoke several foreign languages was asked or persuaded to help teach Spanish to Sam Houston. She played the gilded harp. She was charming, I'm sure, in every respect. So she won his eye. There's a problem, however. Sam Houston was not an eligible bachelor at the time when he, thank you, I might need help, when he fell in love with this young uh, beauty of Nacogdoches. He had married in Tennessee. The marriage lasted only three months, and the wife went back to dad and Rumor has it, a, a younger boyfriend that she couldn't live without. So here is Sam Houston, three months into a marriage. It's his first marriage is a disaster. Uh, interestingly enough, at age 15, Sam Houston um, ran away from home and was adopted by Cherokee Indians, lived amongst them for a number of years and learned a lot about uh, Native American ways. After he was jilted in love with his first marriage, he uh, left office as governor of Tennessee, sort of faded into the woodwork and rejoined uh, some Cherokee tribal uh, connections that he had in what is now present-day Oklahoma. So he married a Cherokee woman after the, his first marriage, came then eventually left and made his way to Texas. People said that anybody who crossed the Sabine at that time, they often were vagabonds, people trying to leave behind an unhappy marriage, people trying to get a new start. They were a rough and tumble crowd, and that may or may not describe him. But in any case, he arrived here, was very desirous of meeting up with, uh, hooking up with Miss Regay, but he was married. So he initiated the procedure to try to get a divorce from his wife. However, Texas was under Catholic rule at the time. Mexico did not want to see divorces, did not sanction them. He had a very difficult time getting a divorce. Miss Anna, uh, beautiful, talented, intelligent, intelligent as she was, also highly scrupulous didn't really take too well to this whole idea of divorce and remarriage. So she was not too fond of this idea. Well, we have the story of what happened one evening in April 1836 that relates to, imagine this is a dagger. Anyone know that story? No, no, All right, see, I knew there was going to be some things. So she was about 16, 17, 16 or 17 at the time, and Sam Houston has come to be a guest in Anna's father's home. They're all chatting amiably in the living room. The front door is open, and a person, a Mexican, with a dagger in his hand, uh, leaps forward from the shrubbery, comes in the house door, is ready to assassinate 
the general, and Anna Regay sees what's happening, leaps on the man with the dagger, disarms him, and saves Sam Houston's life. Imagine the gratitude you would feel if you're Sam Houston. She's a beauty and she's handy to have when people are trying to assassinate you. Uh, several weeks later, several weeks later, he's coming back through Nacogdoches and shortly thereafter will be the Battle of San Jacinto. And he says, Sam Houston says to Anna Regay, if you will but give me your good wishes, I am confident that I will have victory at San Jacinto. So the next, he stays the night, the next morning, Anna's prepared to send him on his way to battle. And she has spent the whole night working on a sash to give to him as a token of her sentiment. She ties it around his waist, places his knife in the belt, and off he goes to battle and has victory. Uh, as he, uh, he's wounded in the battle, but of course he's there with Santa Anna when the treaty is signed. He's under, a, okay, imagine a big sprawling oak tree. Uh, after the, the um, surrender is signed, he gathers up the leaves from the oak tree that are on the ground and fashions them into a laurel and sends them back to Miss Anna Regay with his fondest regards. Uh, from the battlefield <laughs> to my dear Miss Anna, thine Houston. Who does he send them back with? Well, of course, Dr. Robert Anderson Erian, who is a physician in Nacogdoches happens to be Sam Houston's personal physician and the messenger. He is the one who carries love letters. This is a sample love letter that Sam Houston wrote, yes, to Anna Regay. You can even look at it and see the, he's addressed it, one of those self-folding envelopes, maybe popular in the day. So all these love letters are being shuttled back and forth by Dr. Erian. In the end, Anna Regay is unwilling to bend her scruples, even though the divorce has gone through and he's an eligible and very <laughs> wettable character as president of the Republic at that time. She declines to marry him, at which point Dr. Robert Erian says, well then, my dear, would you have me instead? The messenger may be waiting for his moment or maybe wooing her on the side, we don't know. But they marry and interestingly enough, their first son, can you guess what his name was, what they named him? Sam Houston Erian. Sam Houston Erian. So apparently the good relationships persisted over time that even though it was a love triangle, it didn't end with animosity. Uh, it must not have ended with animosity because Sam made Robert his first Secretary of State uh, under, in the Republic of Texas. Um, this is the official seal of the state of Texas. After the Battle of San Jacinto, when Texas had gained its independence, Sam Houston asked his would-be bride would you please design a seal for the state of Texas? And though Anna Regay, Erian, is not buried here in Oak Grove Cemetery, she's buried in Marshall, Texas, and Sam Houston, he lies in Huntsville, um, you will find today this seal everywhere, and including in this graveyard. Here is an example. You see this shape marker, and if you look behind you over your shoulder, there is a tall granite marker with the state seal of Texas on the top. And um, it was the marker that's erected for every hero of the Texas Revolution that's been recognized by the state of Texas. And the designer of the seal is Anna Regay, Erian. So she is here even if her grave is farther north. So there you go.